we'll see if that works. Um, all right, so what we're going to do first is uh, I've created this little web page here. It's just test.html. It's a copy of the syllabus. So I've just copied and pasted the HTML from our own class syllabus into a new document. I put it in a uh, directory all by itself. So you'll be able to see. So if I just list that directory, there's a single file, test.html, and the contents are just the uh, contents of the syllabus, which the syllabus is created with this kind of crazy uh, content management system, so it's all complicated. But fortunately, we don't have to really worry about that. What we're going to do is um, look at the code, but not really look at it too much. And we're going to add one thing, which is we're going to add our own JavaScript script to this. I'm just going to type script, source, and then it's going to be a file that's in the same directory. So I'm just going to say um, example.js. And now I have a reference to a script, but that script doesn't exist. So I'm going to go create it in our same directory here, the one that includes test.html. So um, lots of ways to do that. I want to make it uh, example.js. All right, so now I have my blank text file, just a blank text file there. Um, and it's included in this page. So that means that I can now, uh, when this page loads, I, this script will run and I can do various things. So, you know, uh, standard hello world kind of examples, like I can do alert, hello world. If I type that, save the file. Go back to the browser, reload it. Hello world. Yay, the script works. I should warn you in advance. When, no, if, no, when I make mistakes, it's all just to see if you're paying attention. So, <laughs> so please pay attention. Um, another kind of variant on a hello world, which might be useful for your own debugging, is we can write messages that don't pop up as these modal dialogues and, and block the whole web page, but we can uh, write out console messages. So I can say, hello world, say that, save that, and then I refresh the page. Nothing appears to happen, but if I uh, get into the developer tools, so one way to do that is to go to right click anywhere on the page, go to inspect, and then uh, console, you'll see my hello world appears there. Make that a little bigger. All right, so um, that is our, our kind of basic, we have a script now. Uh, one of the things we'll want to make sure we do when we start actually manipulating the content in the web page is we want to make sure that the whole web page has loaded before we start doing that. And so uh, it turns out there's various ways to make sure that is true, but uh, we're going to be using jQuery, which is a, a library, a JavaScript library that kind of makes some things easier, um, more uh, straightforward to do, and work across browsers too. But uh, and we're gonna we're gonna basically say don't call our code until um, the document is actually ready. And so it's a little bit a little bit weird, but um, the idea is this dollar sign is kind of like that's jQuery. So it's kind of a shorthand for saying like, hey jQuery library, I want to talk to you now. And then we start referring to something in this page. And in this case, we're just going to refer to this special thing called the document, which is just the whole the whole document. And we're going to say when it's ready, run this this code right here. Uh, and so anything we type in here won't load, won't happen until after the um, document has has loaded. So a lot of things like if I just put a console log, hello, now, again, uh, if I do this, then you know it really won't seem like it changed too much um, because uh, that didn't depend on anything uh, in the page loading. What the difference is is that if I start say looking for you know images on the page, uh, if I call that before the page loads, there won't be Im any images because the browser hasn't loaded them yet. If I call it after the page loads, then those images are now kind of in the 
the browser knows about them. So we can do um, we can do something like that. We can say use our fancy jQuery to find all our find all our images. Um, and I don't know what happens if we just do console.log all of the images, maybe. All right, so now we get in our log here, we get this weird kind of data structure, but it's got our, our images, and um, it'll even let us in the log kind of highlight, you know, which image is it talking about, all the things that image can do. Uh, and if we go back to our project page, so the... Uh, all this is basically boilerplate to get your extension running, which we'll cover in a bit. Um, let's say we want to change how, um, how say, something, something looks. So what if we want to add, I don't know, we want to add a class. Maybe we want to make all of our, our images, I don't know, have a, a big red border around them or something. Um, we could do that with the combination of uh, CSS and JavaScript. So we have to go back to our HTML page here to do this. We have to add in our style, we can add a new class. So you make a new class like big red border. And we can do uh, border, say five pixel solid red. You can see that I like red borders. It's also what's in the assignment. I don't know. <laughs> They're pretty ugly and easy to see. That's, <laughs> I think that's why. Um, okay, so now that we have this class here, we can do things from the from our from our uh, JavaScript like when the page loads. So we can say when the page loads, find all the images. So this is jQuery for all the images. This is since there's no. Uh, if I did this, it would look for things with a class name image. If I did this, it would look for. Uh, any elements that have the ID equals image. In this case, it's just going to be all image tags. I can add class and then that big red border. If everything works right, trusting all of you to find my errors. <laughs> if everything worked right with that, then I, if I reload our page, our images have a big red border, and I think they're kind of cut off for some reason. That, uh, but we have a big red border around our, our image. Later on in the assignment, does that make sense? Kind of like just putting some CSS and then applying it with, with uh, JavaScript as opposed to just applying it from the beginning. Uh, somewhere down here, I, oh yeah, okay. So here's a, we can actually make our, um, we can make our, our web page uh, respond to keyboard presses. So what if we, Take our, our existing code here and change it a little bit. Where instead of uh, instead of just automatically adding the images, what if we surround it with this little bit of code that says apply? Basically, it's saying select this document thing, so the overall object, this like the overall document object, and anytime a key is pressed, so this key down event, a lot of different events in JavaScript like you know, mouse down, key down, click, other things like that. Uh, you might have heard me complain about people using mouse down instead of click um, as an accessibility problem. Um, anyway, so we can uh, now say, take our same little adding the class big red border, and instead of uh, just adding that class when the page loads, uh, now we're going to say when the page loads, then add this key down event handler. So basically when the page loads, say, hey, now anytime somebody clicks a key, run this function. And that function is just always going to add the class big red border to all the images in the document. So oops. Now if that works, be amazed. Okay, so first of all, you know, it didn't add it didn't add the class right away, right? So that's probably good. Um, but now let's see if I Type a key, it doesn't work. What did I do? What did I do? Did anyone catch my error? Let's see. So debugging is important. Ah, look at that. 
it actually works. That's great. Okay, so uh, it says I have an uncaught syntax error missing. This is actually a pretty good, easily to understand error. Okay, so example.js line, that four means line four. So let's see what I did. Oh, yeah, because I ended the function, but it's kind of this weird function that's passed in as a parameter to this other, this other function, this key down function. Okay, so now if I do that, right? Anyone find any other errors? Yeah, thanks. So. Here or here? Um. It's kind of weird, right? Because we've got this like, what it really is is, so document, this returns this, this is kind of a reference to this object that then ha is going to have, well, it's a call to a function which returns an object which has a method, <laughs> key, key down, and, and then that's also a, a method, and so, but it, and what it takes as input or as a parameter is a, a function, and so JavaScript is this crazy, horrible, awesome language where, um, you know, you can just create functions right there in the, in the parameter list, so, you know, we have um, that create our function, and that's why we need that parenthesis at the end, and we need this curly bracket because it closes the function. A perhaps more readable way of doing this was you, you could create the function outside of here, right? I could call this function respond to key down or whatever. Uh, and then when I add it as key down, I could just say respond to key down and pass it like that. But that would be the same, the same thing. Yeah, so within, in this, this would be, we would then put, you know, this, whatever we want to happen when we call this function. Okay. So all of this together is essentially equivalent to this part where uh, we, and this, in the, in the, the, the uh, top case here, we are defining the function as an anonymous, we'll call it an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name. Anyway, it's defining it right there in line as we're passing it in. So I think I can erase all this. I think it will work. Anyone think it'll work? Who, who, who has confidence? <laughs> yeah, got a couple thumbs up. Maybe one or two thumbs up. It'll <laughs> maybe work. Okay. All right. So I didn't get an error. So we got rid of the error. But will it work? Where's those images? At? I'm going to put those on there. Yes. Oh, did you see that I hit a key? You probably <laughs> couldn't see that, huh? All right. Well. All right. I'm going to reload it. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. So now we have uh, this uh, little JavaScript program that, uh, when the page loads, adds this thing that listens, that waits for people to press the key, and when they press the key, uh, it's going to add. It adds this this uh, new class, the CSS class, to all image tags to give them this big red border. All right. So. Uh, Let's see. Let's see if I can remember this. I might actually. Be, uh, one other thing is that it is interesting is that this event, so this thing that happens, this key down event, um, you can access things about it, right? And so, in particular, for the keyboard, you can access uh, what key was pressed, right? Uh, and so, we might want to use that to make it so different things happen based on what key you press. And so, if we want to say. Uh, See, maybe if, if we want to, we only want to read the, add this border when the B key is pressed, for instance. So we can say uh, if ev dot, I think it's key code or something, <laughs> equals, hmm, I actually don't know. Unfortunately, you have to use, I think you have to use, there's some way around it, but you have to, as far as I know, you have to use the the ASCII code for the, the key. So what I'm going to do is cheat here a little bit and uh, just log out the, use the console log to, uh, to tell me what key code I'm pressing. So I'm going to, so I've, I've used my own, my own code to get a sense of this. So I've reloaded it. Now what should happen if I got that name key code right? Okay, so every time I press a key, it's giving me the code that's produced here. So if I want to, I've just been pressing random keys, but if I want to uh, see what the B key, for instance, key code is, I can press B. I can see that it's 66. 
lucky 66. Uh, and I can then change this to if key code equals 66, then, oops, I'm really more of a spaces for indentation kind of guy, but uh, I can now say if the key code equals 66, add this big red border class to the image. So now what should happen, if I reload this, is I should be able to press a whole bunch of keys, nothing should happen. Well, that's a space, it does something else. <laughs> um, and then I should be able to press B and it adds that big red border. Okay, cool. So then, uh, what if I wanna, let's see, what would I want to do? Uh, maybe I can I can add another add another one or maybe we should toggle it. Maybe we should see, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the only reason that works that that big red border was a, a name just made up by me and put in here in um, into the into the web page. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, that that doesn't mean anything. Um, and we could change it. We could make it sad. <laughs> it's blue now. Um, that would be really confusing, right? Now it says big red border, but it's blue. Anyway, um, <laughs> different kind of inaccessibility. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, um, I believe, I believe, so uh, another handy, handy dandy thing to be able to do while you're kind of developing your, your code is you can actually type commands right here into the uh, console. So I can type this. I was interested to see, I think there's a has class. Uh, method big red border, but I don't really know if that's true. So I'm gonna try it. Okay, so um, the images have this class big red border, uh, but they don't have say big red red border two because I didn't define that. Uh, and so one thing we could do is we could make the B key uh, instead of instead of always adding the border, we could have say the the key toggle, you know whether the border is on there or not. And so we could do that with uh, we go back to our file, back to if uh, image has class big red border. If it has it, we actually don't want to add it. So we're going to do something slightly different, which is remove class big red border. OK, else. Oh wait, I messed up a little bit. <laughs> All right, so now I gotta add my, I gotta add my key, uh, my key detector thing here back. Okay, so change it up a little bit. So now it's still saying if, if they press the B key, which is this map to sixty six here, key code sixty six, then then we'll check if. In this case, I guess all the images or the first image or something has the class big red border. Then we remove the class. So we basically take the, the border away. Uh, if it doesn't have the class, then we add it. And so the effect of this will be that it'll just toggle back and forth as we uh, press, press B. So hopefully, oops, got to get your keyboard focus here. So now if I press B, it toggles back and forth. Okay. That kind of kind of makes sense. Um, let's see what other what other cool stuff do we have in here? Uh, well, we could we could play with actually speaking something. That's kind of fun. So um, I'll just copy and paste this this line of code here. So. Um, And it's really as simple as including this and whatever this text here, whatever you pass in, uh, it's just going to say that. So I could be like, I'm toggling, yo. <laughs> um, and it should, should, 
Oh no, I messed up my audio again. <laughs> How to do it? Um, I'm toggling you. <laughs> hardest part about this turned out to be getting the um, getting the getting the the sound system to play um, play the audio, not getting the browser to produce the audio. <laughs> Uh, okay, so, um, right, there we go. Uh, and there's, there's, other, there's more detail in the, in the assignment. Um, in the last 10 minutes, I thought we could take, this, uh, we could take this, this little bit of code here and instead of making it a script that we include on the page, uh, we could turn it into a web browser extension. And so it's really going to be very similar except for instead of having um, this uh, instead of having this script only execute if the web page has decided to include it, uh, it would execute whenever you uh, whenever you wanted it to based on you know whatever inclusion criteria you say. So maybe you want to have it work on accessibilitycourse.com or maybe you want to have it work on you know all web pages that you you visit. So, uh, I'm going to get this um, screen recording, hopefully working again. Okay. All right, so how do we turn this into an extension? Well, uh, let's go back to our terminal here. Let's make a new directory for um, super cool extension. Uh, in the super cool extension, we're going to make directory for scripts, make a directory for CSS that we want to include. We're going to make uh, a file called, uh, I'll just make it like this, echo file for manifest.json, which is, we'll, just, we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, if I go into scripts, I'm going to do two things. One is I'm going to make a, um, Super cool extension.js. So that's where our, our uh, JavaScript is going to be. I'm also going to create a local a local copy of this of jQuery. So to get all those jQuery things, the dollar sign, all of that, you actually need to include jQuery. And we can do that within the extension. Uh, we just have to get a copy of it. So this is a command line program to take that URL and just download it. So now you can see it's um, I'm in this in this scripts directory. Go back. I'm going to go into the CSS directory. I'm going to make a file super cool extension.css. Uh, I think I have all my I, that's really all the kind of structure you need. But now we need to go uh, fill out our manifest here. So manifest, I give you an example manifest, which you can pretty much just copy in the project um, description here. Somewhere. Over, ah. All right, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it in here. Um, just a, just a, mostly just a bunch of metadata about the extension that we're going to create. So, um, you know, some versioning, the name, we'll call this instead of access reader, we'll call it super cool extension. Um, minimum Chrome version, uh, I don't even know where they're at, but probably nothing that we're going to do matters too much. Um, and, then it, and then it allows us to describe what are called content scripts. And so content scripts are really just J JavaScript like we've been working with, JavaScript scripts that get inserted into the page automatically by the extension, by the browser. Uh, and so it's it's really as if uh, just as we did, I took that syllabus page and I added a script tag to it. Uh, essentially, content scripts are just if you could take uh, whatever page you visit with your web browser and add a script tag into them. That's really what content scripts are. Uh, and so we'll define our content script. There's a matches. So this is what web pages do you want this to run on, right? So I've kind of started with just the accessibilitycourse.com and all the files um, on that, other files on that, on that domain. 
Um, you could make this as general as you know, any web page that you visit. Uh, probably while you're developing your extension, you don't want to do that. <laughs> because if you have some error or something, you might find it frustrating um, for it to be on all the web pages you visit. But maybe once, by the time you get done with your extension, maybe you actually would want it to run on you know, every page that you're, you're visiting. Uh, what JavaScript files are we going to include here? So um, one is we're going to include jQuery, so we have access to that. Uh, the other is we called this something else, right? We called this um, super cool extension. Uh, and we also have CSS. So, so uh, we also had what super cool extension .css, I think, right? All right. So now if I, how do I get this into my browser? Uh, well, you go to Chrome, just like we did when we were trying to fix the wave problem earlier. Chrome extensions. Uh, and there's this button at the top, which is called Load Unpacked Extension. Uh, and so this is what you would use as you develop the extension. It allows you, instead of having, say, one file that's all packaged up and ready for release that you want to load into the browser, uh, it allows you just to load a, a directory. So if you click that button, it just gives you a finder window. Um, and there's our, there's our folder, right? So that's where I put my folder. Super cool extension. Select. And somewhere down here, super cool extension might be. Is it showing? Did it give me an error? Is it up here? Oh, there it is. I see it. Cool. All right. So super cool extension. We have now modified our browser with our super cool extension that currently does nothing. Um, but now you can do the same things that we did uh, that we did before. So if we look at uh, in the scripts. Directory, you know, if you really wanted it to alert, um, hello world, every time you visited the accessibilitycourse.com webpage, you could do that. One trick here is that instead of reload, just reloading the webpage, you actually have to tell the web browser to reload your extension every time you, you make a change. So there's a little button here, reload. Um, yeah. Yeah. How do you make it so that it detects the content? Yeah, uh, well, we'll get to maybe a little bit of that. It's sort of explained um, um, in, the, in the project file. But the, the idea is you'll set up an event that will trigger every time the mouse it hovers over an element. And once you have that access to that element, there's a way to get the text out of that element. So um, if you have the jQuery object, it's just dot text. And you can get the text out of the, out of the element. Um, yeah, so now we've reloaded that. So now if we reload this, no, it didn't work. Oh, because you know why it didn't work? I think I know why it didn't work. Our manifest said www.accessibilitycourse.com and I was visiting accessibilitycourse.com, so it didn't work. If I change this to www, look at that, hello world. Now every time I visit this webpage, hello world, hello world. Um, we can then, uh, if we copy in our example to just kind of do the full, full around the world here. Um, if we do that, again, reload the extension, and then go back to, there may actually, oh, there are, see, there's a couple images. So if we press the B key, I'm talking, yo. I don't know why it didn't. Change the border on that, but I'm talking yo. <laughs> so now every one of the www.accessibilitycourse.com <laughs> webpages will speak I'm toggling yo whenever you press the B key. <laughs> you may find a way to make this a little more, more usable. Um, and that's hopefully what you'll work through uh, on project three. But please do uh, work on it as you can just so you get a sense of you know, what you might uh, have trouble with, so you can ask questions, come to office hours, et cetera. Sound good? All right, thanks.